What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Boogie 298 coming at you live. Let's get into the power of the internet. And this is my weekly gaming news series, which I talk about video games and gaming in general and all the news surrounding games. So let's just get right into the games. So the Game Awards are coming up in less than a month, and we finally got the nominees. And I almost always, and probably will this time, do a full Game Awards nominees video to talk about the nominees and what I think is going to win in each category, even though I'm almost always wrong each year. I did want to take a moment here to look at the Game of the Year nominees because I think there's something really interesting here. Here are the nominations, and a lot of these make sense. We have God of War, Red Dead Redemption 2, Spider-Man, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Monster Hunter World, and then the indie darling, the platformer... Celeste. So I've heard a lot of people say that Celeste doesn't belong there, but to be honest with you, it is one of the better games uh, this year. Even if it does have that 8-bit retro style and feel to it, I really do highly recommend you download and play that game, especially because it's well worth its budget price. But a lot of people have said that they feel that should not be on the list because it's a smaller game, it's an indie game, it doesn't deserve to be on that list in a year, which we had a lot of other huge AAA games. Of course, your regular Battlefields and your Call of Duties, but you've got your Far Cry 5s, you've got Hitmans, you've got Assassin's Creed's, you got a lot of other really big games, and a lot of people feel that that should be on the list instead. But I'm curious as to what you think. I personally don't mind Celeste being on that list. I would like to see more indie titles, and I would like to see more than just six nominees, maybe eight, maybe nine, maybe ten, so that people know what the best games of the year were. A lot more games could get nominated that way, though it might make it more difficult for people to, to vote. I don't know why they do it that way. But I will say, I'm glad to see an indie title show up on the list. Celeste was kind of groundbreaking in that it was one of the best platformers I played in a lifetime, and it's very, very good, and I highly recommend it, even though it's a little too difficult for me to beat. I did enjoy what I played with it. That said, I'm curious as to what you think. Who do you think is going to win? And do you think Celeste should be on the list? Let me know down below. In a previous episode, we talked about Nintendo suing ROM websites to try to get them offline. And we talked about them suing for over a hundred million dollars. Well, it looks like Nintendo has won. They have sued a man and his wife for $120 million, and they have successfully won the case. Now, this American-Arizona couple owned a couple of websites, including loveroms.com and loveretro.co, and Nintendo decided to send them a cease and desist letter, and I guess they ignored that. Nintendo sued for $12 million, and rather than have this go to court, the couple pled guilty, and now they owe Nintendo $12 million. They also agreed to hand over any ROMs that they had of Nintendo properties and agreed to never distribute them again. And basically, this would ruin most people's lives. I don't know if they have $12 million, but they owe Nintendo $12 million. And I'm not entirely sure how that works, even with my research. If you can't pay it, what happens? I guess you pay them monthly for the rest of your lives. But the point of this wasn't to destroy two small lives. The point of it was to scare everybody else running ROM sites that share Nintendo ROMs in order to just get them offline so Nintendo can continue to sell you those games, uh, you know, on the Switch or elsewhere. ROM websites always kind of operated on the idea that, you know, it's not necessarily illegal for you to have a ROM of a game that you've purchased and you already own, you have the physical copy of, but uh, not everybody does and people know that, and so Nintendo definitely just wanted to send a message here to other ROM websites to say, look, whether it's technically illegal or not, we will sue you for personal damages and we will probably win in court. And that seems to be the message that's been sent here. So if you have some ROMs from Nintendo you want to download and you can legally download them, you probably need to legally download them now. Now, this week's episode is proudly sponsored by the folks over there at Verve. And I have to say, the mass majority of my viewers have already signed up for Verve under my account. But if you're one of the people that are still holding out, you're going to want to pay attention to this. Verve continues to add all kinds of great content, including this week they added the Boomerang channel, which has a lot of classic cartoons that is almost impossible to find anywhere else. But besides Boomerang, you're going to get Nick Splat, you're going to get Rooster Teeth, Geek and Sundry, Nerdist, and all their great podcasts and shows. You're going to even get access to Crunchyroll, all of that great anime, professionally subtitled, built right into the app. And speaking of exclusive content, they just announced that the first season of the show, Final Space, is going to be exclusively available on Verve. I just started watching it, and I think it's fantastic, and I think you should check it out too. But the best news is, if you use that link right now, you'll be able to sign up for a 30-day trial of Verve Premium and start watching those shows completely ad-free, and you'll be supporting me at the same time. So I highly recommend that you do. So a couple of games out this week, and I wanted to look at their scores so you knew whether or not to purchase them. Uh, Battlefield 5 is coming out very, very soon, and its current score over at Metacritic is an 83, with 21 critics weighing in. Now, that's not a lot of critics, so who knows where it's actually going to land. I would expect somewhere closer to 78 
for this game specifically based on some of the reviews that I've read, but let's talk about the good and the bad. Ignoring the controversy overall and just focusing on the good of the game, a lot of the reviewers seem to say that it's some very fast-paced, very, very decent Battlefield gameplay. It's probably the most fast-paced Battlefield yet. You're going to get right into the action, and you're going to stay in the action, and there is a ton of action. So that's probably pretty good for a Battlefield game. When looking at the downside, some people had noticed some frame loss issues, especially on the PC version of the game. Uh, other people had said there's some real balance issues, especially when it comes to vehicles and anti-air stuff. And then more importantly, keep in mind, there are several game modes that will not work on the launch of this game. There's the uh, the Battle Royale mode, which isn't working, the co-op mode, which is not working. Those are not due out until even later next year. So a lot of reviewers have noted that if you're going to buy this game in 2018, realize you're not getting a complete game. You won't get the complete game until 2019. This is games as a service kind of at its worst. Craziest thing about this release, though, to me, is that as of right now, as of filming this, there are some people already playing the game, and if you got the deluxe edition version of the game, you're probably going to be playing it by the time this goes live, or very, very soon after that, but if you're buying the standard version of this game, the standard version of the game doesn't go live until next week, so you want to talk about games as a service, if you don't get an upgraded version, you're not playing it till next week, and if you're just going to buy the standard version anyway... I would recommend waiting until the other game modes actually hit sometime next year because you know they're going to discount this game. And then by the time this goes live, you'll be able to pick up Let's Go Eevee or Let's Go Pikachu, the latest Pokemon game. And I know a lot of players who are really deep into Pokemon have ignored this entry. And I think that might be a mistake because not only is it a reimagining of red and blue and yellow um, and getting you to, to tell that story a second time, including Team Rocket and all the classic 151 Pokemon, uh, but then it, people have ignored it because they feel like it's not a core entry to the series. But I have to say, the more reviews I watch, the more I realize what I love about the core entry is still mostly there. Um, there's still plenty of gym battles, there's still plenty of trainer battles, and there's still plenty of post-game content. So even though it does embrace the Pokemon Go mechanics and you're catching it with, you know, throwing Pokeballs in the wild, I think that's kind of annoying. It's not the same, but it's not so different that I won't enjoy the game, even though it's supposed to be fairly easy. It might be worth it just to see a retelling of that original story, though, in the Kanto region, and I think it might be worth picking up. Currently setting at an 81 on Metacritic with uh, 30 critics weighing in, so that's pretty good. I wanted to follow up on a story I covered last week, by the way. I talked about Activision having a small dip after the announcement of Diablo Immortal, and I said that it would slowly rise back up over the next couple of weeks. Turns out I was wrong. It turns out they took a much deeper dip than that. On Friday, November 9th, when they announced uh, Diablo Immortal, they took a huge dip, and they have continued to drop ever since, uh, specifically since they announced their quarterly projections and quarterly earnings, showing that revenue is down quite a bit. Basically, that earnings report said that numbers are down across the board for people playing their games, and on top of that, the people that are playing are spending less money. So games as a service is not exactly working for them. So it's very bizarre to me that they continue to push mobile, which is almost always games as a service. Games like Hearthstone have less players than ever. A game like Destiny 2 is maintaining to struggle their player base. And an epic game like Call of Duty, which still has plenty of players, those players seem to be spending less on microtransactions due to the predatory nature of those microtransactions. But if you remember, EA also reported something similar, saying that their players are spending less and less on microtransactions all the time. And even though there's still hundreds of millions of dollars to be made there, maybe this is the beginning of the turning point. Maybe players like you and I are spending less and less money on these games that we've already bought. And maybe, just maybe, this entire predatory age will have come to an end. Hopefully, if we keep our fingers crossed, and we hope hard enough, and we keep our wallets in our pockets, maybe we'll just be able to buy complete games again one day. Probably not. And then finally, Fallout 76 launches this week. You probably already played it by now if you were going to play it. But here's what I will say. If you're still on the fence about this game, keep in mind that the launch day week of these types of games is always difficult. All of these multiplayer games, their servers are getting hammered. It is very difficult to log into those games. I don't recommend taking a day off work or anything like that. I would definitely wait until things even out a little bit because even though this game has gotten a lot of backlash from users and a lot of backlash from YouTubers, it still seems like it's sold very, very well and there's still plenty of people eager to play. 
And there are currently no reviews to point to because with a multiplayer online game like this, you kind of have to wait until after they launch. You can't review an MMO the day they go live because you've not actually played the game the way it is meant to be played. So keep in mind, if you're one of those people that are waiting for reviews, you need to continue to wait. Now I can give you some anecdotal evidence of my experience playing it on launch last night. I had a lot of trouble staying connected to the servers, but I did get to play a couple of hours and my beta character did roll into the game it still felt pretty bereft of content, but when I met another player, I had a lot of fun playing with other people. Again, if you want to go into this as a social game, I think you'll have a lot of fun. If you want to play it solo, I don't know how much fun you'll have. The crafting is there. It's Fallout 4. It's basically a giant Fallout 4 mod um, that's probably worth the $60 if you're crazy about Fallout 4. Just keep in mind, there's not much for storyline. It's just you interacting with a lot of bots and a lot of terminals. And then finally, the fun part, interacting with other players which can be annoying or great, depending on the player you meet. If you didn't decide to pre-order that game and you do decide you want to pick it up or at least consider picking it up, I would just keep playing whatever game you're playing right now and watch some people play it on stream, watch some people play it on YouTube, and make sure it's a game that you want to get into. There's no real spoilers for you here because it's not a full game without much of a story. It's just kind of a cool sandbox, and if you enjoy that kind of thing, you might enjoy this. Know that the PC version ran a heck of a lot better last night than it did in beta with the day one patch. So you'll definitely want to wait till a few more patches get in and the game is going to run even smoother after that. All right, that's going to do it uh, again for this week. Let me know what games you're currently playing, what games you're still excited about for the rest of the year. And let me know who you think is going to win that game of the year down in the comment section below. While you're down there, don't forget to check out Verve. I think you're going to really enjoy some of the shows on there now that they've added Boomerang. I think you're really going to enjoy some of the cool stuff on there. Um, and if you do decide to check out Verve, you'll be supporting me at the same time. As always, guys, thanks for watching. I love you very much. And I'll speak with you again soon.